Joseph. Today we're going to talk about something a little bit different. So here's the question. What happens when a, a company's, in this case a Vodafone, investments in a frontier market cross over nicely with overseas aid from its home government, the UK government? What happens then? What, what would you like to talk about? Yeah, we're looking at M-Pesa, which this week Vodafone said it was going to launch in Europe. Uh, M-Pesa is a mobile money system which it first launched in Kenya seven years ago and since then has become massive w within Kenya itself. So that's one milestone this week. The other milestone, though, was the UK government saying it had finally hit its target of sending 0.7% of GDP abroad in overseas aid. The connection there is how M-Pesa got started, because uh, many people don't realise, given its scale now, that it began with a pilot project in 2006-2007 uh, in which Vodafone put in £1 million pounds of funding, mm -hmm. but also the UK government matched that with a £1 million pound grant of overseas aid. See, okay. All right, uh, and it's done well in PESA, so what's the problem then? Uh, well, I mean, so the question here, and it's a good one to ask this week with those two milestones, is well, why couldn't Vodafone have put up the cash itself? You have to remember in 2005, for example, it had eight billion pounds mm -hmm. of free cash flow. So one million pounds is neither here nor there. Uh, from the perspective of the UK government, this is probably one of the most successful projects in overseas aid it's ever done in terms of developing the infrastructure of a, of a rather key East African economy you know, reducing transaction costs, mm -hmm. making sure people who are unbanked actually have a stake in the financial system. Mm -hmm. Those are non-commercial incentives, though. And for Vodafone, this has been a very good commercial investment. Mm -hmm. You know, its subsidiary there, Safaricom, uh, which led the M-Pesa project, uh, had a huge market share. Even at the time, it's only got bigger because the problem for a telecoms operator is how to retain customers. Mm -hmm. And M-Pesa was a very good service for uh, achieving that objective. Mm -hmm. So since then, Vodafone has had pretty much all of the up, up, upside mm -hmm. of M-Pesa, and the UK taxpayer did put in a small amount at the beginning, took on the early risk, but since then, you know, the, at least in terms of commercial reward for that risk, they haven't got much back. Okay, quickly, how, is there some way this could have been done better, in your view? Well, I mean, it's, like, it's interesting because M-Pesa's um, sort of monopoly operator system hasn't really been replicated elsewhere in other governments because governments tend to prefer you know, other operators to have a stake mm. in the, the same mobile mm. money system. So in terms of, you know, if you want A to be replicated elsewhere, maybe this has been less successful, even though it's worked in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So again, maybe you shouldn't sort of work with companies at a very early stage uh, on this basis of you know, cash grants. And secondly is, well, look, maybe if governments want to do overseas aid, uh, and if that 0.7% target is good, uh, then maybe they should consider much more sort of joint ventures, equity investments, exactly. and well, equity over cash, mm. more or less. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really interesting. Thanks, Joseph.